Byron is going to teach Jackson how to tell the time in the library. Perhaps he could teach you too. Come on into the library. It's a place where I love to be. Look in a book, here's a story for you. Who makes stories when the day is through? Who makes stories when the day is through? Story makers, story makers. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers. Stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Byron Wordsworth. Jenny and Jackson. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers. Stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Come and be a story maker. Come on, everyone, it's time to go home. Off we go. Story makers. It's midnight in the library. Hello. Time for all story makers to come out. Are you ready? The sun is down, the stars are bright. Story makers come out at night. Hi, story maker. I'm Byron. Byron Wordsworth, here to make some magic and lots of stories. Oh, Jackson, look at all these clocks. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Jelly. Yeah, the children have been telling the time in the library today. Yeah. yeah. I wish I could tell the time. Oh, yeah, me mm. too. Hi, guys. Oh, hello, Byron. How are you doing? OK. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. Byron, can mm. you tell the time? Oh, oh, indeed I can. Mm. It is 12 o'clock. Midnight. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Midnight is when story makers come out. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right. you've got it, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Oh, 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 what's that? Oh, it's my watch. I've set it to remind me to do something. Oh. Well, what's it saying? Uh, nine o'clock. <laughs> But, but it isn't nine o'clock. No. It's midnight. You just said so. Ah, but my watch is telling me to remember to do something at nine o'clock. Oh, <laughs> well, what's happening at nine o'clock, Byron? Yeah, yeah. I wish I could remember. <laughs> well, maybe something important is going to happen. Oh, yes. no. oh, Byron, you know, the children are learning about time in the ah, library yes, today. Mm, that's why all these different clocks are here. Mm -hmm. mm. These don't look like clocks. Ah. They're sand timers. Oh. They help you to time things. Well, how do they do that? Nah. Well, with this one, mm. it takes three whole minutes for the sand to drop from the top to the bottom. Oh. And so when it does, mm -hmm. you know that three minutes have gone by. Wow! <laughs> I wonder how many books I could pile up in three minutes. <laughs> yeah. Or how many times I could skip... <clears throat> Skip. Skip. Dance around Dance. the library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wonder how many times I could sing my favourite song. Oh, no. <laughs> half a pound mm. of bunny rice, mm. half a pound of treacle. Mm. That's the way mm. the money goes. Uh, Pop uh, goes the weasel. Uh, 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 yeah. Have you finished? Have you fi oh. Yes. I think yes. you should try being quiet for three minutes, oh, Jelly. Jackson! Oh, uh, you, you two, you two, you two, well, uh, uh, cool it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps we could use this sand timer to make a story? Oh, oh yes, yeah, please, okay. Byron. Mm. Uh, one three-minute timer for the story machine. <laughs> oh, perhaps it will make a three-minute story. <laughs> and now we're going to need your help for the story mm. using these and a little imagination. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine the story. What do you think, guys? Oh, I don't know. Oh, yes. I never know. Oh, it's a playbook. Oh. And it's called Millie and Her Boiling Egg. What do you do when tea time is due? For Millie and Mum, there's cooking to be done. It's time to boil and... 
Check it's boiling. Whoa! Look at that. Set the timers. Three minutes. Tip the hourglass. What do you do when the sandy seconds trickle away? Go out to the garden. Go out and play. Rush round in a circle. Once, twice, thrice. Ready yet? No! Two minutes to go. <laughs> Rush round the garden twice. Go down the slide once. Ready yet? No! One minute to go. Bounce with baby Arthur. Once down the slide. Once round the garden, ready? Yes! Ready. Ready for an excellent Millie Munchin Eggy Eating Tea. I wish I could tell the time. It's quite important, isn't it? Oh, indeed it is, Jax. Mm. I mean, if we didn't know what the time was, we wouldn't know what to do next. Sure. Well, what do you mean, like, uh, when to get up or, or, or when to eat? <laughs> that's right. Mm. I mean, I like to have my tea at five o'clock. Oh. So that's... There. Yeah, five o'clock. Is it? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you know it's five o'clock? Well, the big hand is pointing straight up to the twelve, so that oh. means it's oh, something o'clock. Oh. And the little hand is pointing to the five. Oh. Five o'clock. All oh, right. Well, um, I like to have a little nap at three o'clock. <laughs> um, could I do that on the clock? <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> um, OK, so it's something o'clock. So the big hand points up. That's it, hmm? something o'clock. And then uh, it's three o'clock. Mm -hmm. So the little hand uh, points to three. Ah, Is that right? Excellent, Jax, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, and what would it show when it's time to tell stories? Well, story makers come out at night, mm -hmm. so that's midnight, 12 o'clock. Oh, so uh, midnight is when both hands are pointing up. <laughs> Cosmic, <Yes>. Jax. <laughs> yeah, mm. you're really getting the hang of this, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Byron, mm -hmm. have you remembered what it is you have to do at nine o'clock? <laughs> you know, Jax, I haven't got a clue. Oh, um, oh, <laughs> well, let me see if I can help you. All right. Um, so we point the hands to nine. No, the for, big oh, hand no, goes. No, big yeah. hand, yes, big hand to Good. twelve for something o'clock, little hand to nine for nine o'clock. Mm. <laughs> Does that help you remember? <laughs> remember what, Jax? Oh. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. I, I wish I could remember. Oh, but <laughs> I, I know. Uh. Why don't we put the number nine mm. in the story machine and see if it makes a story to help you remember? <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a try. OK, okay Jax. Oh, thank you. Mm. <laughs> Number nine, right on time. Now, are you ready to hit us with some imagination? Hmm. Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. What's it going to be? <laughs> ah, it's a Kevin the Spaceman story. <laughs> oh, and it's called Tick Tock. And Spanner in space to explore, seeking out planets never heard of before. Kevin had never seen a planet like this one before. From space, it had looked like a huge flat circle. Now they had landed, it also seemed to be scattered with numbers. Watch out, Spanner! Don't break anything, Kevin warned, stepping over a number three. He needn't have worried. Spanner was mesmerised by a long black arrow that seemed to be moving very slowly on the ground. Ruff, warned Spanner. Ruff, ruff, ruff. He didn't like the look of this moving thing at all. Kevin noticed a ticking sound, soft at first, but getting slowly louder and louder. Suddenly, there was a loud ringing. A worried-looking alarm clock came hurrying towards them. 
Time to meet visitors. Time to meet visitors, muttered the alarm clock to himself. Mustn't be late. He scurried up to the rocket and then stopped. Oh, no. I've missed them. Oh, dear. Um, <clears throat> coughed Kevin. The alarm clock turned round. Who are you? He asked, looking confused. Uh, your visitors? Suggested Kevin. You're late, scolded the alarm clock. Come along now. Come with me. And he set off at a great pace, with his bell ringing again. Where are we going? Asked Kevin. Time for tea. Time to give visitors tea, chanted the clock. Spanner licked his lips in anticipation of a bone. But the alarm clock seemed to be slowing down, and his speech was getting rather slurred. Hurry up, we're going. Hurry up, we're going to... <laughs> to Kevin and Spanner's amazement, he stopped mid-sentence. Perhaps he needs winding up, suggested Kevin. And he started to turn a knob on the back of the clock, grunting as he did so. Oh, it's a bit stiff. Slowly the clock began to speak again. We mustn't be late, we mustn't be late, we mustn't be late, we mustn't be late. And he charged off at top speed with Kevin and Spanner in hot pursuit. Soon they reached a table laid for tea with lots and lots of jam sandwiches. Tea's ready, chimed the clock. We're just in time. The teapot poured a cup of tea for Kevin. Spanner drank his tea from a saucer under the table whilst Kevin tucked into the jam sandwiches. Suddenly, the alarm rang again. Time to go, chanted the clock. Time for visitors to leave. Come along. Spanner grabbed some jam sandwiches. He would eat them later on, after takeoff. Now, oh, I'm glad they had time for their sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, I'm really, really hungry. Yeah, me too. Did you fancy some celery? Oh, yeah. Celery. Right. Mm. Abracazoo. Oh, I love it when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one stick of celery for you, my green yeah, dream. Thank you. One for me. And uh, we'll save this one for Jackson. He's busy telling the time at the moment. Mm. Mm. Uh, yummy. Mm. You know, I love that celery. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how much time it would take for me to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> No time at all knowing your appetite, Gels. Oh. oh, look, Byron, mm -hmm. there's an alarm clock like the one in the story. Oh, yes. Mm. It says nine o'clock. They all say nine o'clock. What's supposed to be happening at nine o'clock? Why is it called an alarm clock, Byron? Uh, oh, well, well mm -hmm. you set your clock to the mm -hmm. time you want to get up, like okay. this, yeah. and then it wakes you up with yeah. a sound like... Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, do they all make that noise? Oh, no, 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 no. Some make bleeping noises like this. Okay, yeah. Oh, no, no, I, no. No, no, I don't like that one. <laughs> no, no, it's beep, beep, beep. And some no, no. play tunes like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and some make funny cuckoo noises. I bet that makes a big noise. Oh, that's Big Ben. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's in London, and yes, it does make a big noise. Oh, oh very big. <laughs> Can we use the picture to make a story? <laughs> sure thing, Gels. Okay. <sighs> One picture for a story about Big Ben. <laughs> And, of course, we're going to need your imagination, too. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine a story. Oh, what is it, Byron? Who's coming? Ah, it's a blue cow story. <laughs> and it's called Blue Cow on Time. In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. One of the cows is most unusual. Blue Cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, Blue Cow was chewing grass and pondering. I wonder what it would be like to go to a place where people are always on time. 
She's off again, said the other cows. So Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a ticket to a very on-time kind of place, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for somewhere that told the time. And then they arrived. Towering above Blue Cow was a huge clock called Big Ben. It chimed one o'clock and made Blue Cow jump. Suddenly, the Prime Minister appeared, wearing pyjamas. Um, um, uh, the problem is huge. <laughs> Big Ben is telling the wrong time. I should have gone up ages ago. A nice lady called Jo came up to Blue Cow and said, Come on then, let's go and mend Big Ben. So off they went. Ooh, how many steps are there? Blue Cow panted halfway up, looking exhausted. Oh, nearly there, just a little bit further. Ooh, I hope you aren't scared of heights, <laughs> joked Jo as they reached the top at last. Ooh, I feel a little bit strange, said Blue Cow as she climbed out onto the face of Big Ben. Blue Cow carefully moved the clock hands around and around and around until it was the right time again. But then... Big Ben began to chime. Ooh! cried Blue Cow and she put her hooves in her ears. Oh, don't worry, Blue Cow. Won't be a moment, said Jo as she lowered Blue Cow down to the pavement. The Hooray! crowds were Hooray! cheering. Hooray, Hooray for Blue Cow! Hooray! The Prime Minister, now dressed in a suit, stepped forward. Uh, um, uh, thank you so much, Blue Cow. Uh, well done. And then, seeing Big Ben, he said, Oh, I, uh, oh uh, look at the time. I must go. And he ran off to wherever he needed to be. Blue Cow said goodbye to Joe and decided that where she needed to be was back in her field. You'll never guess where I've been. Where have you been? I've been to London and changed the time of Big Ben. Everyone knows cows can't change time. But we know they can, don't we? <laughs> Clever blue cow, <laughs> getting Big Ben to tell the right time. <laughs> oh, and now it's the right time for us to finish our stories. Ah, and now I remember why nine o'clock was so important. Why? Because that's the time the librarian arrives to read our stories. Oh, oh baby! Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Hello. yes. That's it. Oh. <laughs> We'd better skedaddle. Yeah. Skedaddle. Mm. Dawn is upon us, the morning is nigh, yeah. we've made our stories and we bid you... Goodbye. Goodbye. Time to go. Story makers, story makers, working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, come back soon. Bye. Thanks for helping. Bye. See you later, story maker. <laughs>